morning, church. Welcome to our joint Sunday communion worship service. At this time, if you're able, please stand for our call and response. If you can have our call to worship PowerPoint. read the text that is in bold and italicized we will we will exalt you our god O king and we will bless your name forever and ever great is the lord and mighty to be praised lift up your hearts we lift them up to the lord let's worship god together god sent his son they called him Jesus, he came to love, heal and forgive, he bled and died, to buy my pardon, an empty grave is there to prove my Savior lives, because he He lives, I can face tomorrow, because He lives, oh, fear is gone, because I know He owes a future, and life is worth the living, just because He lives, and God sent His Son. God sent his son, they called him Jesus, he came to us, he and forgive, he bled and died. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow, because he lives, oh, fear is gone, because I know he owes a future, and life is worth living just because he lives. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow, because he lives, oh, fear is gone, and because I Oh, he holds a 
your cleansing flow Now all I know Your forgiveness and Him in this worship time we pray and ask that you would meet us every one of us in this room we pray and ask that your spirit your presence would encounter us oh god transform us lord have our hearts committed to you once again and speak to us lord we thank you and we love you lord pray all these things in jesus name take your seats let's turn to our left and right and let's pass the peace along say peace be with you Good morning, everyone. Once again, we welcome you to our Riverside Community Church uh, Joint Communion Sunday Worship Service. Uh, some announcements uh, for us, um, but before we look at all the announcements, um, if you're visiting us uh, for the first time or you're uh, coming to uh, join our worship service for the first time, we welcome you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Please join us uh, after our worship service in our Fellowship Hall across uh, uh, the uh, sanctuary here uh, for our fellowship. We have uh, awesome lunch prepared, so please uh, join us for a time of uh, fellowship. A baptism and membership class uh, is being held, as you could see the dates here. Um, if you're interested and if you'd like to take the class, please uh, speak to either me or any of the elders um, today. A homeless shelter meal, uh, meal serving is going on today. Uh, thank you, everyone, for signing up to participate and serve. Um, our number of meals have actually increased from 140 to 160, indicating that we need to uh, serve more. So um, those who couldn't serve actually this time today, uh, we have three more uh, this year. Next one is in June, so please take a look. Uh, our take a look at our um, email updates for all the uh, exact dates for this homeless shelter serving. Uh, please uh, stay after our fellowship, our lunch, to uh, prepare uh, together uh, for the um, homeless sh uh, shelter meal. Uh, women's ministry and men's ministry announcements. First, uh, women's ministry uh, meeting. Every last Friday of the month, and so 
we have a meeting this um, uh, this at end of February um, from 7:30 to 9 p.m. at Nan Park's house. So please uh, join us um, if you're uh, uh, leading the house house of God. Um, uh, child care is available. Praise the Lord. Amen. <laughs> so um, all women are welcome. Child, if you have kids, child care is available. And uh, if you have any questions, please speak to uh, Nan or Ginny today. Men's ministry. Um, skeet shooting. February 25th, um, 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. at uh, Thunder Mountain Skeet Shooting. Okay. Uh, we're shooting some guns. Um, I believe uh, it's in uh, Ringwood. Uh, it's going to be an awesome time. It's, it's men coming together in fellowship, uh, catch up with one another. So please join us February 25th, Saturday, 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. But any questions you have, please speak to our Deacon Song Park for more details. Uh, every Tuesday we have a pickleball. Um, Pickleball, tu- <clears throat> oh gosh, Pickleball Tuesday, every Tuesday, 7 p.m. right here in our church uh, in the fellowship hall. So please join us. It uh, doesn't matter, men, women, we can all play together. So um, please uh, join us Tuesday night, 7 p.m. Uh, you know, kids can come too, I think. And uh, let's, uh, let's get some exercise going uh, uh, for all of us, RCC. Amen. And uh, any questions, you can speak to our Deacon Greg today. Uh, Mercy Ministry announcements. We have a uh, clothing drive going on. Any generally used men's clothing or any kinds of clothing and coats, please donate them um, to our church here and then we'll distribute them uh, out. But um, you can uh, stop by the church anytime. Um, church will be uh, open. And uh, uh, any questions you have regarding the clothing drive, you can speak to Deacons Barbara. But also we have the prom dress drive. So if you have any um, prom dresses just lying around in the home, please donate them. Consider donating them to, uh, to this community. Um, once again, you can donate them here and drop, I mean, drop them off here at our church. And any questions, please speak to Deacons Barbara. We have some weekly meetings. Uh, first, um, every Sunday we have the prayer group study right here in our library. So please join us. Coffee break, um, Bible study is every Wednesday, um, 9 a.m., 9.30 a.m. here in the library, so please join. Wednesday night Zoom prayer meeting, uh, every Wednesday night over Zoom, I believe uh, 7.30 p.m., uh, join us as we come together and pray. And Saturday morning prayer in person right here in our main sanctuary at 7 a.m., uh, join us for uh, word of devotional and prayer time. And then... Lastly, pre-worship prayer every Sunday uh, before our worship in the library. Please join us as we pray for our worship service to God. Um, if you have any prayer requests, please consider them sending over to our prayer ministry. You can see the email contact here. But we would love to pray for you and pray with you together. So please send your prayer requests. Um, and uh, please take a look on the screen for upcoming worship and fellowship servants. And as it is a joint worship service, we have some um, clay announcements, our youth group. Uh, this coming up uh, Friday, we have joint FNF um, uh, with uh, three other churches at KCC. Uh, this detail will be shared uh, via weekly email update. So please take a look um, at your email. And then the following week, we have the uh, escape room outing um, over at uh, Palisade Mall. Um, so please uh, sign up. Once again, the sign up link is provided and sent to you uh, via email. So please take a look at that as well. I believe that is it for uh, the announcements at this time. Our Deacon Greg would come up for offering and congregational prayer. Bow our heads and pray. Uh, Heavenly Father, we come together on this Sunday to worship you. 
We're your church, Riverside Community Church in Elmwood Park. We know that you are here with us. We thank you for all the things you have provided to us. We thank you for your son Jesus who died on the cross for us so that we may live. We thank you for knowing every detail of our lives and being with us daily. We pray that our worship to you today is pleasing to you. Heavenly Father, thank you for all the blessings you provide to each of us here on a daily basis. We know that your eye watches us and your hand guides us throughout each day. Only through your grace are we, are we saved and able to truly enjoy your great blessings. Please continue to bless each one of us mightily. Heavenly Father, these are such busy times for all of us. As a church, we have multiple ministries and activities that we engage in. As families, we have school, work, and other activities that keep us super busy. And yes, these are all important things as we grow our bodies, minds, and spirit through fellowships and through commitments that we make and keep. But I ask for your hand to, in us to discern what we should be doing and how we should be doing it under your plan and not ours. Within the day-to-day -day hustle and bustle, I pray that you give us the wisdom to look to you for guidance and then the strength to act upon it. I know that you have a plan for every one of us here. I, I know you have a plan for our church, and I pray that we are doing the things that are pleasing to you as we live our lives that you have given to us. You have blessed us with this church and this building. We pray that the things we do are pleasing in your eyes and that we are obeying your plan. We are continuing our search for our head pastor to shepherd to our congregation. We ask that you guide us to meet the perfect pastor for us, and we pray that you will send him to us in your time. We pray that we listen to each other, but that we are obeying you, that we are doing things with an eye towards your will and not our whims. We know that the best way to discern your will is to pray and to listen to your words. Please provide us the wisdom and the strength to do this at all times. This is a special church. It's your church. There are so many people who are such contributors to your kingdom, from the elders, the deacons, and the people who teach you on Sunday school, the brothers and sisters who cook for our fellowship meals, the FT leaders, and the leaders of the various ministries. So many are in roles where we actively participate in your church. We pray for all these people and thank them for their service, their dedication, and their love for you and for each other. Thank you for sending these people to be part of the Riverside Community Church congregation. We want to especially lift up the great pastors that you've sent to minister to our congregation every week. Thank you for sending us today, Pastor Jay. Please give him the wisdom to send us your message. But even more important, we pray that you will provide us the ears and hearts to listen and obey. We need the wisdom to listen to your will through Pastor Jay, and we need your strength to carry out your plan for us. We also thank your blessings upon Pastor Sean, Pastor Eunice, and Pastor Grace and their families as they, as they continue to take expanded roles at Riverside. Thank you for sending them here. Within our congregation, we pray for those of us who are in difficulty. Many of us are having financial issues as jobs are in doubt and the environment around us is ever challenging. And while money is of this world, these are still issues that weigh heavily in our hearts. Please help those of us who are having financially challenging times. Please provide them with peace of mind that there is a plan laid out by you and that you will not forget us. Some of us also have health issues, be it ourselves or for our loved ones. We pray that you will ease the pain caused by illness and that your will will be done in them. We ask for your healing hand, but more importantly, your guiding hand in our brothers and sisters and all the members of our church. At this time, we pray for your offering to, uh, for our offering to you. We pray that it will be multiplied and that Riverside Community Church can use it to expand your kingdom in a way that is pleasing to you. And finally, please be with us during our worship today. We can feel your presence with us in your building. There are so many things that are happening in our world from tragedies internationally and the economy and the divisions in our societies. But at the same time, each of us here also has our own personal and our family issues that we deal with every day. We know you are with every single one of us Please ease our earthly burdens, but help us to keep our eyes on your heavenly plan. Thank you for sending us Pastor Jay to lead our worship. Please let his message today be impactful for each of us. Let his voice carry into our hearts so that we can grow and be eased by your spirit. We pray these things in Jesus' name. This time I'd like to go ahead and... Uh introduce our guest speaker for today. Um, Pastor Jay Choi is actually a dear friend of mine. Um, we know each other since we're in early 20s. And um, he is actually from uh, the 
the West Coast. Um, he flew in this past week, uh, last Thursday, because there was a youth revival called Hosanna. Uh, it's a reg regional youth revival here in Bergen County, and um, over 25 churches were represented, and uh, uh, 500 uh, students and, all, and adults uh, joined uh, this revival, and uh, we're so blessed. And uh, he spoke there, guest spoke there, and um, he's with us this morning. Um, just to share a little bit about Pastor Jay, he serves as a college pastor at Tapestry LA. Um, he is married to his lovely wife, Cindy, and uh, just had a lovely daughter, Gemma, about a month ago. Right? Is that right? Yeah, uh, about a month ago. And... Uh, he is a big time Laker fan. He's from the West Coast. Uh, and he, boo, right? <laughs> no, I'm just and he's also a big time baller. He's really good in basketball. Uh, I mean, some of the youth kids who attended the um, Hosanna revival probably saw the video. But, um, you know, I consider him as my longtime rivalry. rivalry. <laughs> yeah, just me, right? Um, but probably not, yeah, because this guy, like, dunks. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's surprising. But um, uh, anyway, uh, just awesome man of God, a gifted, anointed speaker of God's word. And I just admire his faithfulness to the word of God and his just passion and love for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And so uh, let's give a warm East Coast RCC welcome as Pastor Jay comes up. Good morning, everyone. Uh, if you haven't already, can we just greet one another one more time with a, just a good morning? Glad you are here. Um, as Pastor Sean did mention, I am from sunny California, where the weather is always nice and pleasant, where the temperature is always two digits. Um, and I, I just kind of a, a funny thing. In California, what we like to do is when we wear long pants, we like to cuff them up like this. I don't know if you see my pants, if you think it's a little strange. I don't know if it's a West Coast thing, but um, I think it's because the weather is so nice because when I came here to New Jersey, for the first time in my life, my ankles felt cold. <laughs> I, I didn't realize that any exposure of skin would feel so cold. Um, and I felt like a lot of New Jersey people got defensive. And they're like, it normally isn't this cold. Um, but regardless, it has been such a great joy so far to be here. Um, it's new, my first time in Jersey. Uh, but more than that, uh, I'm just very excited to share God's word with you guys this morning. If anything I say uh, doesn't sound cohesive, if anything I say sounds not coherent, Please be gracious to me. As Pastor Sean said, I have a one-month-old daughter. <laughs> and the last time I got more than five hours of sleep consecutively was last night. <laughs> so um, regardless, it is my joy to be here. Before I pray for us, uh, I just want to share a brief little story. I shared this at the revival earlier. Um, I want to share a story about prayer before I pray for us and as we dive into God's word this morning. At my church, um, there is an elderly woman who's about 70 years old who has a reputation of being a prayer warrior. This woman lives in the prayer room, day and night, interceding with passion and, and a fiery spirit. Uh, she's one that, in a sense, wrestles with God and tarries in his presence. And so she's always known to be at church, and she has this particular room where she'll just pray all day, all night. You can hear her from the outside. And so a group of us were just gathered in the courtyard, and there was a little boy with us who was about six or seven years old. And this little boy was wondering, what's going on in that room uh, where the woman was praying? And so to kind of mess with him, we said, you, you should go in and, and check it out. So the little boy goes to the area and just kind of quietly opens the door. And then he steps in. 
And then he closes the door. And for the next 15 minutes, he's just in there. And we're all wondering what he's doing in this room. Because the woman in there, you can hear her. She didn't stop praying. So this little boy's in there. And about 15 minutes later, the boy comes out of the room. And his face is just glowing. And he looks like he's in awe. And he's just awestruck and his face is wide and his eyes are wide. His mouth is a little open like. <sighs> and so we ask him, what, what happened? And he said something that was so profound that it stuck with me till this day. He said, you know, in church, everybody prays. But when that woman prays, she talks to God. To God. And that struck me. So oftentimes we can so quickly pray, Father, thank you, Father. Just so quickly enter into his presence that we can often forget the miracle that it is. That when we engage in prayer, this holy endeavor, we are talking to God. It's amazing. So with that kind of in the forefront of our minds, if we can bow our heads one more time and approach a holy God who welcomes us and just take a moment to posture ourselves as we engage him in prayer. Father, we thank you and we praise you for this morning. Lord, I am reminded that your steadfast love never ceases. And your mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. God, what a tremendous reality, Lord, that you are so holy. And yet, Lord, you still pour out your grace and your kindness towards us and towards your people. Father, I ask this morning, by the power of your Holy Spirit, not of flesh, but of your Spirit, that you would revive us here this morning. You would reignite in our hearts a passion for the name of Christ, that Christ alone would be exalted, and we would rejoice in his glory. So, Father, as we pray, Father, as we hear your word this morning, Lord, incline us to you and help us, Lord, to be very, very thankful for who you are and all that you do. Lord, thank you. We praise you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, um, this morning... Uh, I want to start with just a basic theological truth that all of us know. And the truth is simply this. God answers prayers. Wow. God answers prayers. And what I mean when I say that is, is that when we pray, and God responds and answers, something tangibly happens that would not have happened if we did not pray. My father is a pastor, and he's a missionary in Thailand, and one of his favorite sayings, um, if you're familiar with an app called Kakao Talk, uh, it, it would be his little description, he would have it there on his description, and he would always tell me, son, human intercession brings about divine intervention. And that was like his zinger. That was like his main line as a pastor and a missionary. Human intercession brings about divine intervention. Namely, when we pray, 
God moves. And when we pray, God responds in such a way that something tangibly happens that would not have happened if his people did not pray and intercede. Now, some people falsely think that because God is sovereign, prayer doesn't actually do anything. Some people think prayer is simply about changing one's attitude, one's posture, one's perspective, one's disposition on a particular circumstance, but it doesn't actually change circumstances itself. But according to scripture, that's actually a false dichotomy. Yes, prayer does change your mind, and it does change your attitude. And it does change your perspective and your inward feelings. But according to scripture, at the same time, the mystery of prayer is God is sovereign. But when we pray, something actually changes. The apostle James in his epistle in the fourth chapter, he says to his people, to the church, you do not have because you do not ask. And all throughout scripture, we see God inviting his people to pray. Why? Because he intends to answer them. He intends to answer prayer. And as a church, I know I noticed in the announcement, prayer warriors need it. Prayer warriors need it. I felt like that announcement should have been bolded, italicized, raised to a hundred font. Because there is power in prayer. Not because we who pray are powerful, but because we are talking to God. And in his grace, it is his absolute joy to respond to the cries of his people. So the simple A simple theological truth as I kind of just kind of paint the background of this message. Really, God answers prayers. So my exhortation for us this morning is that if God answers prayers, my encouragement to us this morning then is let us be intentional about taking the time to pause and give thanks to God for all the ways in which he has faithfully answered prayer. So if the truth is God answers prayer, let us be a intentionally thankful church that recognizes the ways in which God is moving and answering prayer and let us pause and reflect And give thanks to God. I believe it is Martin Luther that said, more than thanksgiving, let us be a thanks living church. And that is my exhortation for us this morning. And as we're about to see in scripture, prayer and thanksgiving are two sides of the same coin. They cannot be divorced. If prayer is the breathing in, then thanksgiving must be. Be the breathing out. So in scripture, if you have your Bibles, if you would turn with me to our first passage, we're going to be looking at Philippians chapter 4, verse 6. We're going to be looking at a passage in Colossians and then a passage in 1 Thessalonians. They're just going to be, if you're, if you're reading this from your Bible or from the screen, they're literally a couple pages apart from one another. So Philippians chapter 4. Verse 6. And I want you guys to notice a pattern that we're going to see in these texts. Verse 6 says this. Apostle Paul writes, Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Amen. Colossians chapter 4 verse 2. Apostle Paul writes, continue steadfastly in prayer, being watchful in it with thanksgiving. Amen. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, 
Verse 16 through 18, Apostle Paul writes, Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. So if you're looking at kind of like the framework, the structure that Apostle Paul has for prayer, he never separates prayer from thanksgiving. This attitude of gratitude is necessary when we make our requests known to God. And the reason why I have the conviction to pray that this morning, to make our requests known to God with thanksgiving, is because I believe as a church, many of us are good in that first part. We make our requests known to God all the time. Uh, whether it be for our children, whether it be for the weather, promotion at our work, health, strength for the day, thank you, you know, all, all of these things that I feel like what's oftentimes lacking is recognition of even when God answers the mundane, rarely do we actually thank him for what he has done. We don't take the time to really cherish it in thanksgiving. For example, I, I think about as a church, many times we like to corporately gather and pray when we see a, a big event coming. Um, 40 day fast for a revival service that's happening. And so people will fast and they will pray expecting God to do a great move at this revival service. And when God is faithful, and he responds, and he meets with his people at this revival service, I have never seen a church go, all right, God faithfully answered, let's have a 40-day feasting and celebration and in thanksgiving of how God has responded. So often we pray in expectation of God to do something, God does something, and then we quickly move on to the next agenda. And I don't know if that's a, 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 just a... The, the nature in our culture this day, have you got to hustle and bustle and get it done, checklist, next thing. But we are missing out on a tremendous blessing if we forsake thanksgiving that ought to be uh, paired with prayer. All throughout the Old Testament, especially in the Psalms, I was just reading Psalm 105, 106, 107. In the Psalms, you will see the psalmist writes extensively about how God has faithfully answered his people. They always, in the Old Testament, they always refer back to Exodus, where God freed and liberated the Israelites from slavery from Egypt. And they were right, give thanks to the Lord, his love endures forever. How he parted the Red Sea, give thanks to the Lord, his love endures forever. How he sustained his people in the wilderness for 40 years, give thanks to the Lord. How he gave us a faithful king, King David. How he established his kingdom. And it goes on and on and on. And after all, it always says in the Psalms, give thanks to the Lord, his love endures forever. If you're familiar with the culture of the Israelites, they were all about feasts, festivals, Sabbath. Notice all of these things are in a sense a remembrance of what God had done in thanksgiving. Because it's in remembrance of God's faithfulness in the past that fueled the Israelites to have bright hope for the future when they were presently in moments of trial and tribulation. When, the, when they would read and sing the Psalms, they were in captivity towards Babylon. They were enslaved. They were mistreated. They would wonder, God, where are you? But they would reflect back in thanksgiving. Wait, no. God was faithful to his people which stirs up hope in me to believe he will continually be faithful to me in the future. It is his past faithfulness that fuels us to have bright hope for the future, presently, now. 
if we do not cruise controlling by ourselves, but God wants to reveal to us he's in the minute details, he's in it all, He is interwoven even in the mundane of our day to day, he is Emmanuel, God with us. So let us adopt a posture that recognizes this. I'm going to share a brief uh, test story. Um, <clears throat> so I attended and graduated in a seminary in California called uh, Talbot Seminary. Out of curiosity, does that ring a bell to anyone here? Oh, praise God, just one person. <laughs> Have you heard of Biola University? Okay, a little more. Biola University is the undergraduate. <clears throat> Talbot Seminary is the uh, seminary of that university. Now, in this seminary, um, as I was signing up for classes, there is this one legendary professor. His name is Dr. Walt Russell. Brilliant scholar. Brilliant man of God. He's, uh, he's known for his Bible exposition, <clears throat> his teaching, top tier. Um, he is known to be the mentor of mentors. Uh, so he's that guy who was about s close to 70 years old. And when I was joining Talbot, everyone would say to me, there's one class you have to take, and that is hermeneutics which is uh, just another way to say uh, how to interpret the Bible, a class on how to interpret the Bible, hermeneutics with Dr. Walt Russell. You have to take that class, best professor ever. So I sign up, I immediately, slots were filling up, I, got, I signed up, I got the class, super eager, super excited to take this class. First day of class comes, I arrive an hour early, because I'm just like, first day of class, first day of seminary. I want to be a great pastor. I must learn. So I'm there early. And then 20 minutes in, I realized I shouldn't have come this early. It was, it was redundant. There was no need. And I'm waiting. Eventually, other classmates come in. I sit at the very front, eager to learn. And eventually, everyone comes. 11 o'clock strikes, and Walt Russell comes in. And we're all whispering amongst ourselves, oh, the legend has entered. We're about to be blown away by this class. And he walks in, and he sets his things down, and he looks at the class, and his presence was very underwhelming. Very underwhelming. He would go on a tangent and answer something completely different, wasn't even close to answering my original question. Uh, Dr. Russell, can you elaborate on Romans 7 and, and the, the flesh and uh, can you expand on that? And then he would tell a story about his wife, Marty, and we were so confused. And we thought it was funny that his wife's name was Marty. <laughs> That just kind of dates him, and you see how old he is. <laughs> and, and, and he would always talk about his wife, Marty, never answer our questions. And so we thought, okay, maybe he's having an off day. But two weeks into classes, we realized, no, this is Walt Russell. He cannot teach. Uh, I'm not saying that to be harsh. It was just objectively speaking he could not teach, and we were all confused. And I felt a little betrayed by all of my former seminary friends who told me to take this class. Like, were they pranking me? Was he actually the worst professor <laughs> rather than the best? And so I went on YouTube, and I typed in lectures by Walt Russell, and I was absolutely baffled by what I saw on the YouTube video. Because on the YouTube video, Walt Russell was amazing. He was dynamic. He was charismatic. He was sharp with his sentences. Asked the question, boom, answered it right away. He was animated like this. He, would pre he was like preaching, teaching. He was such a great communicator, such a great teacher. 
And that, the video was only like five years old, five years ago. So we were confused what happened in that five-year span because the Walt Russell I had was meek, quiet, fidgety, incoherent. And so we were a little confused. After that semester, he retired. And it was made known to the faculty uh, that he had early dementia and that it had formed. And he wasn't, shouldn't have taught, um, but he thought he could do what he wanted to serve. And so by the end, you know, he just couldn't teach. And he actually passed away a couple months ago. Um, so we had a little ceremony for him. The reason I share that is I, I want to be really, really honest. In my entire seminary experience, four years, many great professors, I can say honestly that I learned the most from Walt Russell. Despite his ability to teach due to his dementia, I learned the most from Walt Russell. The reason why was there was two things that I learned from him that no seminary education per se could have taught me. Two things you need to know about Walt Russell. The first thing is he was a man of prayer. What moved us so much was every single class he would always close in prayer. And the strangest thing was, was that even though he was unable to teach well, and his sentences were all over the place, when he would pray, you could tell he's talking with God. His sentences all of a sudden were smooth. It's as if he was engaging with an old friend, but someone whom he respected immensely. His relationship with God was incredible, and we saw it, and it blessed us. This is a man who truly knows God, and it, it struck all of us. Even dementia cannot take away this man's life of prayer. And it was incredible to witness his prayer life. The second thing I wanted to share about Walt Russell that we learned so much was that he loved his wife, Marty. And this, I don't think, he never said, I love my wife, Marty. So it's just every single story was about Marty. I felt like we knew more about Marty than we did hermeneutics by, by the end of the class. There's one particular story that he told about Marty, and that, that particularly, it, it moved me. He was telling us one day on a random tangent that um, he was, his wife, Marty, was planning to visit their son who lived in a different state. And so Walt was like, oh, Marty, please be safe. I'm going to miss you so much. And Marty was like, don't worry, I, I, I have your, um, your daughters to come take care of you, so don't worry. And at this point, he was so moved, like my wife takes care of me even when she's not with me. But he was really worried. And he said, Marty, please be safe, please be safe. Like as you fly on this plane, please come home safely. So he told us, so I would pray. She was only gone for about three days. But every day I would pray to God, God, please keep Marty safe. Please keep her safe back into my arms. And as at this point of the story, Walt Russell, he, he starts tearing up. And he says, three days later, guys, you'll never believe it. He starts, tears are forming in his eyes. Guys, she'll never believe it. And we're all like, oh. And he goes, three days later, Marty came home and she was safe. 
And then we just kind of laughed. We're like, oh, geez, why did you have to say it like that? And then he looked at us very seriously and he said, no, guys, you don't understand. I prayed to God to keep Marty safe. And Marty came home and she was safe. God answered my prayers. And he was tearing up because he was so moved at that reality. I close with that story because I don't know about you, but I want to be like Walt Russell. I want to adopt that posture where I see the hand of God in everything. I don't just thank him for the big ones, but even the small prayer requests. How many times have we prayed, God, can you keep us safe during this drive? And he kept you safe. Here you are. How many times have you felt sick or had a loved one be sick? And you pray, God, would you please heal this person? And that person recovered and is well. How many small prayers have we answered, has God faithfully answered And we miss out on the blessing to see God answered those. He answered those. Because let me tell you a profound truth. What I saw in Walt Russell's life is simply this. The most joyful of people are those who simply see God in everything. In everything, in every detail, God faithful to answer his people. Amen. Let me pray for us and close us for this time. Father, even now, we just take a moment to pause. Because, God, we pray that you would bless us with your word, and I believe you've done so. So, God, thank you for your Holy Spirit. Thank you for this word. Thank you, God. And I pray that you would give us eyes to see all the ways you are at work in our lives and give us that childlike posture of thanksgiving. God, we thank you. And as it's Communion Sunday, God, we even relish the reality of Christ in the cross. God, truly, we want to be those who are filled with thanksgiving and experience the joy and the intimacy of being with you and seeing you in our lives, interwoven in every area. God, would you bless us? Be expectant, and we want to be thankful for when that day comes. So, Lord, stir up in us now gratitude and trust in you. Lord, we praise you and thank you, and it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Jay, at this time. We're moving to time of communion. For those of us who have been baptized or confirmed, may take the communion element out. If you do not receive the communion element, please raise your hand and our welcoming team will hand you one. Here now the word of institution of the Holy Supper. On the night of his arrest, Jesus gathered his disciples. He took the bread. After giving thanks to God, he broke it, gave it to his, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let's go ahead and take the top lid off. It's the body of Christ broken for us. In the same way, he took the cup, gave it to his disciples and said, take, drink. This is a new covenant sealed in my blood for the forgiveness of your sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Go ahead and take the second lid off. This is the blood of Jesus 
Christ shed for us. And church, every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the saving death of our risen Lord Jesus Christ until he comes again. At this time, if you're able, please rise and let us cite the Apostles' Creed together. I believe in God the Father Almighty.
God, we thank you so much for your word. Thank you so much for just being who you are, that you are a faithful God, Emmanuel God, that you are a sovereign God, but especially you're a God who listens to our cries, the cries of your people, your children, and you answer all of our cries and prayers according to your plan and your time. You answer them. So, Lord, we praise you. We glorify you, God, and we worship you. Lord, as we face this new week, pray and ask that you will be with us and journey with us, Lord. Because we do know that there will be times of trials and tribulations, and suffering and pain. But even in those moments, we pray and ask that your spirit would encourage us, Lord, through your word and through our prayers, Lord. We once again thank you for your word. Now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and the amazing love of our God the Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. Amen. Thank you.